<laughs> Hi, everybody. Thank you for that introduction. I don't know about uh, internationally known, um, but that's very flattering. Um, so uh, I just want to ask, how many people hate public art? Yeah. <laughs> Nobody. Everybody likes public art. But if, if you're skeptical, I want to tell you that um, by the end of this presentation I'm going to deliver, uh, you will believe. Okay. So just keep that in mind, that I, I think you will believe at the end. Um, but I'm really just going to talk about three uh, uh, projects that I've done. And, uh, th uh, that, and the first one I wanted to, to talk about is represents kind of how I uh, broke into public art, as it were. And uh, this piece was called uh, Studio Escape um, Exit Strategy. And um, <clears throat> I, I was actually trained as a painter at the University of Kansas. And um, in, in learning to paint, uh, a big part of the process is kind of just sitting around in a studio staring at a blank canvas. And I think uh, for those of you that are in any kind of creative process, uh, you, you probably are used to this, this very agonizing process of staring at a at blankness, looking into blank nothingness, and trying to come up with an idea. Uh, so this was kind of a liberating piece for me, because it was staring at a blank wall and then actually busting through and uh, in this, uh, actually breaking through uh, my studio wall, which was this kind of installation piece that I um, uh, created uh, a dense amount of material. Um, <clears throat> and at this time, I was interested in ideas of, about uh, in, in relationship to architecture and interior and exterior space. Um, and so I created this kind of window in the end, um, at, and this was at a, a residency, an artist residency I participated in, uh, that also kind of created this kind of um, uh, breach between private and, and uh, public space. And that's why I brought it up. And thinking about how, uh, my, my, how I started to um, come into thinking about public space and public art. And um, this process of, of, of digging then actually uh, transcended into the public realm in the form of uh, treasure boxes. And I, I did a, a series of uh, sculptures around uh, Los Angeles where I, I buried uh, these treasure boxes. I saw them as sculptures. And you know, my, my studio partner at the time thought I was a little crazy building these things, building art to be buried. And he kind of hassled me about that. But uh, it actually resulted in, in you know, more traditional art drawings that were the maps, the treasure maps. This one is a, a treasure map, uh, Griffith Park. So this, so this process became uh, an act of putting an intimate object into the city and um, mapping and tr retracing my steps. And I, and I think that what I hope people would pull away from this is, is this idea of how we create our own personal monuments and landmarks in the city. And so um, my work from this point on has explored how public art can kind of emphasize that, this a relationship between private and public and uh, personal ideas in the public and public space. This was a, a treasure in uh, Pomona, uh, Pomona treasure map. And the, the treasure map actually retraced my steps from the gallery to this uh, actual, you know, this idea of a, a treasure being buried, which to me was about a concept. It was more about an idea. That it, it, it almost didn't matter that it was there. It was the fact that if you believed it was there, then um, that was the art. And if you bought the drawing, then theoretically you had a treasure that you could you try to uh, claim out in, out in the city. Um, but those drawings um, led to um, my interest in, in, in signage um, and you know the, the ubiquitous uh, amount of signage on the, the cityscape of, of Los Angeles, the Los Angeles area. And so I, uh, I started to think of, of this structure as a way of putting forth a more like personal message that, that countered um, the typical like commercial and like uh, message and uh, corporate logos, and it, this came about. I, I was interested in marquee structures like this, and and I did a series of drawings that played with um, these grand ideas, like tonight only, which is, I think, associated with Hollywood and uh, perfection. Um, these are like grand ideas that are idealized that 
all kind of come with the package of, of uh, you know, corporate or commercial messaging that, you know, this idea that you could obtain these things. Um, and so the first sculpture that I created, if you mentioned earlier, uh, I, mean, I mean, if you remember earlier my, that I, I told you my, that you might believe at the end of this uh, little talk, uh, so this sculpture um, was created at uh, the Bemis Center for Contemporary Art, and it, it was my first opportunity to, to actually put uh, this, this idea into the public realm. And so I, I arrived at this word, believe, um, for, for, the, it's the, for its open-endedness, that it could in some way self-empower the, the pedestrian, the, the, or the, the passerby, the driver. I mean, more, really with, with, with LA, it's about, you know, you would see this when you're, when you're driving by, and maybe it would, you know, inspire you, or it might, actually, it could, it could um, make you want to doubt what you believe. Uh, <laughs> because it's built on this precarious structure that is, uh, you know, looks like it could tumble over. And so I wanted to convey how this is a, you know, very human, I don't even really know what to call it, it's a very human activity that is, it's very, it's, it's very personal and um, has a, 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 an intimate connotation uh, to the individual, and so by putting it in, in, in the public realm, I think it, it hopefully puts forth more of a question than providing a you know a solution or trying to convince you actually of something. Um, this uh, a variation of this piece is currently on view at Manhattan Beach uh, Civic Plaza. And this is a solar-powered light sculpture. Um, uh, Believe Green is the title. And so with this, I actually have a little bit more of a uh, um, <clears throat> agenda, which is to kind of promote green technology. Um, the, the solar power panel is completely off the grid and um, operates off, this, off of a battery that um, it turns on based on a motion sensor so that it actually flashes on green when somebody walks by or a car drives by, I believe. Uh, and the green light, I, I thought, kind of repurposes the idea of, uh, of uh, a street light, uh, a gr like green meaning go. Like, so it's a command. It's still open to interpretation, but, um, you know, it's... Uh, Believe. Do you, do you believe? <laughs> that concludes my presentation. <laughs>